so uh, let's start then. So uh, as I mentioned, my name is Victoria Bilmeha and um, I'm working uh, at SourceServe as a BI engineer. Uh, lately, I was working a lot with Power BI and because of that, today my topic is advanced Power BI tips and tricks. Uh, I want to share in this topic uh, my real use cases that I faced with uh, working in different projects. Uh, and I hope that this topic will be useful for you. Maybe you will have same or similar cases in your project. Um, so let's... Um, look in our agenda today. Uh, first of all, we will very briefly, briefly go through, uh, through the question, what is Power BI? Uh, this information will be useful for those people who are new to this uh, tool and who do not have experience with Power BI at all, or they have just started working with Power BI. Uh, but then we will move to the main uh, part of our uh, event today, which is advanced tips and tricks. There are a couple items uh, here which I um, put together. We will go through each of this item uh, and we will, uh, I will share with you my business requirements that I had and then I will demo uh, my implementation, how I uh, implemented it in Power BI and how the final result looks. Uh, and the last uh, item in our agenda is useful links. Um, so let's then move to the uh, first item. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions during uh, our discussion, uh, you can ask them, or if you have any question at the end, we also can discuss it. Okay, so uh, what is a Power BI? So Power BI is a business uh, analytical uh, tool, which, uh, which is like a bridge between your data and the uh, decision making. Uh, so it helps you to build a good visualizations and based on that, you can easily analyze your data, slice and dice your data, uh, do your decisions, answer your business questions and so on. Um, there are couple of main items here in this uh, diagram. First of all, these are the data sources. Uh, Power BI has a lot of different data sources. Um, and each month uh, with the Power BI release, it has uh, additional data sources added. So you can see some data sources which are in the beta version right now. Uh, and this list, uh, is growing every month. Um, when we are connecting to our data sources, we have three different methods how we can do it. And these are uh, import data, direct query, and live connection. Uh, if we uh, talk about import data, uh, we uh, load all data from our data source into Power BI. And when we do that, we need to have some space and some memory to store all this data. Uh, if we, for example, are using a Power BI desktop uh, because we are developing uh, a report uh, in our local machine, it means that we need to have some uh, free space and memory in our local machine. And when we are publishing it to Power BI service, uh, then uh, the memory and uh, space is used uh, in a Power BI cloud machine. Uh, then a uh, second option, as I mentioned, is direct query. This is when we connect directly to data source. We do not load any data into Power BI. Uh, we just query our data source every time when we need. Uh, this type of, uh, this uh, method is not available for all data sources that Power BI has. Uh, it is available only for uh, some specific data sources. If you uh, need to know if direct query is available for data source that you have, uh, you can uh, go to the um, Power BI documentation uh, and check it. The link to the documentation will be provided today. And uh, the last uh, method is the live connection. Uh, this method is supported for uh, SQL Server analysis services uh, for both tabular and multidimensional model. 
And um, this one is similar to the direct query that we just discussed, but actually this is different uh, because uh, in this case, uh, all the, we as well do not load any data into Power BI, uh, but in this case, all the uh, manipulation with the data, all the data modeling uh, work and requirements should be done on the data source side. In Power BI, we just load the metadata that we have and work with it. We just build the visualizations. Um, so this is uh, about the data sources very briefly. And then we have uh, two main uh, items in Power BI, this is Power BI Desktop and Power BI Service. Power BI Desktop, this is the free application that you install in, on your local machine and you work with, with it. Uh, usually, um, if, uh, if you're working with Power BI Desktop, uh, the common flow is that you import your data, clean your data, transform, transform your data, and then build visualizations, report, and publish your final work into Power BI service. So if we um, go, if we um, sum up the Power BI Desktop, it's more for, develop, the, for development um, and for all the work that we need to do with our data, let's say. And um, when we done, we publish our work to Power BI service. And in Power BI service, uh, we uh, can also create some reports and visualizations uh, in case we have our data already published into Power BI service. Uh, so in that case, we just connect to the data source that it published and build our visualizations. Um, also what is unique and very uh, um, great uh, ability in Power BI service is that we can also create a dashboard. We can't do it in Power BI desktop. Uh, dashboards, uh, these are the one page uh, that has the main information that uh, we um, grab all together, let's say. We can, um, in a dashboard, we can put uh, our main KPIs and our main um, charts from different reports or from one report and put it all in one dashboard and have it like the first um, item what we can show to our end user. And this is the first point where the end user can start and uh, look into his data. Um, also with the Power BI service, what we can do, uh, we can share our results. So we provide the access to the end users and the end user then uh, use this access and uh, can can, uh, can view and analyze uh, the reports that are created. Um, also, the great uh, feature in Power BI service is that we can control how we share our data. So we can share is just uh, for viewing, uh, but also we can share that uh, end user can use our data source to build his own reports or dashboard based on our data source. Uh, and user can reshare our uh, reports if we allow him to do so and so on. So there are different options how we can share it. And this is also very great features and po that Power BI service has. And the last but not the least features that Power BI service ha has, one of the um, important one is that we can uh, create a schedule refreshes uh, and have our data up to date. Um, in some cases uh, for scheduling automatic refresh refreshes, we need to use Power BI Gateway, which is kind of the bridge between our data and the cloud. Uh, but when we are done with all configuration, we can easily schedule refresh for the time that we need. Um, I think that I won't go into much details with, with any of this because this is not the main topic of our discussion. Um, but in case you will, will have any questions, I will I will be happy to answer. Uh, okay, so then let's move to our main part of our discussion. And our first item is uh, to be able to easily switch between different type of sources in one Power BI file. 
um, so uh, your uh, your client can has um, let's say two or even three different uh, data source types where he has his data stored in the same structure and he in that case he will definitely want to be able to see his data in Power BI file uh, and switch between this um, data sources easily so um, let me stop uh, this slide for now and i will show you um, how it, how it can be realized and how it looks. So let's say um, we have, um, uh, so in my case, I have, let's close it for now. I have tabled uh, with the channels. Uh, it has a list of channels that are available on TV or something like that. And I have this table stored in SQL, um, a scale server table and also I have same information stored in uh, Excel file. Uh, so we have here two different type of data sources and um, I intentionally remove a couple of rows from the Excel file. So when we now will switch between data sources, we will see the difference. Uh, here we have the KPI that shows us a number of channels that we have in our data source. Uh, we can see that now this is um, 736. Uh, so let's go to the uh, to our parameters and switch uh, to different data source. So we we are able to switch to different data source using the parameters in Power BI. And what I did, I created this parameter and here I have two values available. One is Excel and another one is SQLDB. So right now we can see that we are connecting to Excel, uh, which means that Power BI takes all the data from um, that Excel file. Let's try to switch, let's try and switch to SQL uh, database. Uh, and we should click OK. And then we have the Apply Changes button. We need to click on that because Power BI need to create connection and load data. Uh, so data are loaded now and you see that this number changed. Now we have more channels because as I mentioned in the Excel file, I uh, removed a couple of them for demo purposes. Uh, okay, so this is how it looks and I will show you how we can implement it. So to implement it, we should go to our uh, Power Query editor. I think who work with Power BI is familiar with that. So our first step is that we need to create a parameter. Uh, and my parameter, as I showed you previously, has two values, Excel and SQLDB. I should specify some additional information like name, some description if you need. Uh, you should choose the default value and also it shows us the current value which is selected. Currently we have connection to SQLDB. And uh, after that, second step in our implementation will be uh, to edit the M code of our table. So we, we go to our DIM channel table and then we can go to advanced editor over here and what it shows, it shows the M code of the table. Uh, and all what I did, I added the if clause here and this if clause works based on the parameter value. It checks if the parameter value is equal to SQLDB. Uh, then I have this part which basically load uh, data from specific server, specific database, and specific table that I, um, that I specified. In another case, which in our case is Excel connection, uh, then we choose uh, we load our data from the file. And here I specify the path to that file, to that Excel file where I have my data stored. And basically that's it. This is how we can dynamically change, switch between two different types of data sources or even more. If we have more, we just add one more, um, one more uh, if close if needed and we can implement this logic for all of those tables and then uh, the whole our model will be uh, will be able to switch to different data sources 
so okay so that that was it for the switching between different type of connections um oops sorry um, our next topic uh, our next item is custom fonts so in my project i had a requirement uh, to um, use Open Sans font family for all titles, labels, and so on, because the customer has the policy that he need to use uh, Open Sans for all his main documents in in the company. Uh, but the problem here was that Open Sans is what is not default uh, font uh, in a Power BI desktop. And when we want to choose uh, Open Sans, we go to the uh, fonts that are available and we won't see Open Sans there. Uh, so the only way to do that was somehow add it to the default list. And we can add it using the custom th themes that Power BI has. Uh, let me go back to the Power BI desktop. Uh, so right now, um, let me remove the sim right now. Okay, so right now, uh, if you, let's say, uh, take a look in this title here, we have a list of all av available um, fonts. And as I mentioned, there are no open signs here. Uh, and same, let's say, for the KPIs. Uh, if we go to this KPI and take a look in the, uh, okay, here we have data label for the category. Uh, okay, here we, okay, here we have it because it was um, custom visualization. Um, okay, but then let's take a look only in this part, in the title. So we do not have open signs for now. What we need to do, we here have ability to do the custom sim. We just need to browse for that sim. And the sim need to be created uh, using the JSON um, file. I will show you how it looks. Um, okay, here is very simple actually JSON file that all what it has is only the font family open sans, and that's it. Uh, of course, you can extend this and add all the functionality uh, that you need. Uh, it all depends on your requirement, but in our case, we are good to go only with the open sense. So um, when we have this uh, custom sim created, uh, all we have to do is just uh, choose this custom sim and then theme should be imported successfully. If so, uh, we then can see Open Sans available and we can choose this. Uh, I think that that's all for this item. In case uh, no one have any questions, I will move to the next one. <coughs> so the next yeah, one, yes. Hi. Uh, Hi. Can this theme be used for uh, some uh, things from market? Could you please repeat your question? Uh, when you upload uh, some uh, custom visuals from market, can you use this open sense there? Uh, so if we import some custom visual from market space, uh, usually it has. Um, like we need to browse for the code of that uh, custom visualization uh, and then um, uh, like update that code to include open sans as well. So that was another um, item that I also worked in my uh, one of my project. Uh, we had um, a custom visualization, we browse for the code, then we go to that code. Uh, if you was able to find the code of that visualization for sure, then you can easily uh, go to the code and there you will see that there are some um, options with the fonts specified. You can just replace the existing fonts with the ones that you need, or you can just add uh, uh, needed um, font as a 
second option, something like that. Uh, with a custom theme, I think that it won't work for the custom visualizations. You need okay, to. Thanks. Okay. Uh, yeah, then let's go to the next item, which is pop up windows. Uh, and uh, my requirement here was that uh, I had. Um, report which was really overloaded uh, so there was no enough space there to put some additional visualizations or some additional um, I don't know filters and what I actually had to do is to add a bunch of filters to that report and uh, even if I do my report uh, bigger in size, uh, the, the report looks really overloaded. That's why we decided to do not add those, those filters to the page itself, but rather create the pop-up windows. When we have our window um, open, we have a list of all filters available, uh, and then uh, specify the filters that we want and click apply. Let me show you how it looks in a real example. So let's say we have here the report and you see that uh, we have the filter icon. If you click on that icon, you have our pop-up window. Uh, this pop-up window can be not only for the filters, of course, it can be for any other purposes uh, that you have in your project. But just for example, we have filters here. So then we can specify all the filters that we want. Let's say I will choose only a couple of usernames in my report and then I have two options. First I can apply and or I can reset. If you go and click apply then you see that our dashboard is filtered, our report is filtered based on those uh, usernames that I just selected. Uh, if you want to go and switch filter to some other options we can do it or if you want to go to the start page where we do not have any filters applied then we just uh, click on the reset button and this reset buttons uh, uh, move us back to the first um, start page where there are no filters applied so this is how it looks and let's go to power bi desktop to see uh, how it was implemented uh, to implement that, I use uh, such a nice feature in Power BI that is called bookmarks. Uh, I have three bookmarks, uh, bookmarks created. First is a user info start page. This is basically what we have. Uh, so let's say that, first of all, I want to say that bookmark is a kind of snapshot of our um, uh, report. Uh, we do the snapshot and bookmark save the state of the page. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have user info start page. This bookmark contain the, um, the whole page was, was, was no filter applied. Uh, then second one, we have user info page, which is bookmark also and looks like the start page but but the difference between those two is that for the start page uh, we have property which is called data and this property is checked for the user info page this property uh, is not checked uh, what this property means that if it, if it is uh, not checked, it means that all the slicers, filters will be applied uh, to this bookmark and make changes to the visualizations. If this uh, uh, option is checked, as in this case, then any filters will be applied to that bookmark, which is good in our case for start page, where we need to have our data with no filters. And the last bookmark is user info filter which is actually our pop-up window and here we have all our filters and we have two buttons here these are actually the buttons and uh, buttons uh, in power bi are very nice because we have um, property action where in this action property we can specify where we want what we want to do when we click on that button or in other words uh, 
uh, where I want to go when I click on that button. So we can see that when we click apply, I go to the bookmark, which is user info page, which we just discussed, where we um, where all our filters will be applied. So when we specify our filters here, as we just did, and close and do apply, then our bookmark will be filtered, and we go to that bookmark. Uh, and a second button is a reset. Uh, for that button, we go to the start page. You can see here. Uh, and start page also, we just reviewed that it has the um, first state of the page with no filters applied. Um, and this is how it works, basically. For the pop up windows, to have that pop up windows, we also have the button that navigate us to the user info fil filter uh, where user info filter bookmark is our pop-up window. And this is how it works. Um, okay, let's move to the next item then, as that was all what I want to show you for that pop-up windows. Uh, okay, so next one is dynamic columns in a matrix and dynamic axis. I will switch to the Power Base service as it will be easy to demonstrate. So my business requirement was that, let's say I have here my uh, bar chart and uh, I have my bar chart uh, based on the channels in the x-axis, right? But I also want to be able to choose, uh, let's say, uh, not the channels in the axis, but the programs. And I want to see the rate of each program rather than rate of each channel. So to do, to switch like that, we go to the programmers button over here and we just click on that and our chart switch um, his state to uh, show information by each program. And we have top 10 programs here, just to do not overload the report. Uh, but the main idea here is that using those two buttons, user can easily switch and uh, between um, those options and have um, dynamic access implemented. We, we can also have more options, uh, but just for demo purposes, I created only two of them. And, uh, Let's see how we implemented that. Uh, so um, here as well, we I'm using the bookmarks, but which which is now familiar for all of us. But um, there is one different with the previous case. Uh, so in this case, I have two bookmarks. One is analyzed by channel, and another is one another one is analyzed by program. And what I did, I have one report page and I created two separate uh, bar chart, uh, one which has um, a channel on the x-axis and another one which has program on the x-axis. And then for the analyzed by channel, we have here the options that we can hide some visualizations or titles, any KPIs and so on that we have. So when we hide it, we won't see it in that bookmark. So for the channel, I hide the report, which is report uh, where we see information by programs, because actually for the channels, we are not interested in the information by programs. So so you can see that this item is hidden here. I can unhide it and you will see that this item uh, now, now is in that report, but let's do not do that because this is not our purpose. And then for the uh, analyzed by program, I did similar situation, but in this case, I hide the visualizations that has um, chart uh, analyzed by uh, channels. Um, and so basically, um, this was the main tricky thing here. Just hide the information or visualizations that we do not need for our bookmark. And then to switch between those uh, two bo bookmarks, let's say, I used exactly the same approach as in a previous case, uh, where I use my action and navigate to specific bookmarks. So for the channel button, I navigate to analyze by channels and for the program, uh, button I uh, choose bookmark analyzed by program. 
uh, and this was the first part regarding the dynamic axes and then our second part is regarding the dynamic matrix so here we have our table over here and we have a list of some filters that user can be able to specify actually these are not the filters but um, the attributes and values that user want to add to this table dynamically so based on that selection uh, uh, specified columns will be added and in that way user can easily analyze data only based on the columns or values or measures that he want um, right now we can see that uh, payment and company foundation are selected and that's why we see those two tables uh, those two columns here let's say if we want to add a company location to our table to our matrix so we just click on the company location uh, and company location is added we can do same for any other columns uh, and this column will be automatically added to the table or we can i don't know leave only one column because user want to see only the location of the uh, producer so this is how the implement how the final result looks and again let's go and see how we implemented it to do that uh, oops sorry not the right report uh, to do that i use a matrix as a visualization type and then what i did i created the pivot table uh, to show you that um, let's go to here so in my pivot table i have the column with a producer name which is the first column in our matrix then i have column with name column which basically has list of all available um, options all available attributes that user can add to the table and actually i'm using this column in that slicer so user can select any that he need and then last column is a value uh, which is uh, the value itself of specific uh, attributes that is selected in that column also we have payment but this is calculated table uh, sorry calculated column not the column that comes from the source uh, and to see how i did the table it is very easy with a power query because it's very power powerful and it has um here in the transformation it has a bunch of different options that we can use and the one which i used was uh, on pivot columns uh, so i did it for producer name previously we had table like this each uh, attribute was as a separate column when i did on piloting uh, it put all my columns um, names as an attribute and then value in the value column and then I use this table very easily to create my dynamic matrix. So in my matrix, if we take a look once again, for the rows we have producer names, which I believe is clear. And then for the columns, um, uh, I used uh, the name, the column itself, which is basically name of this uh, all my attributes. And for the value, I, I created the measure which uh, takes uh, value of the column if if select if you selected payment it means that we need to do the sum of payment for specific producer name in other case we just take the value of our attribute uh, because the payment uh, should be uh, summed uh, we, we need to do the sum for each producer right and for all other attributes which are just uh, name or company location we just need to bring the value itself uh, and then i put this measure in the values over here and that's how it works um, so this is all for this part of present for this part of presentation uh, if someone have a question i will be helped happy to answer if not we are moving to the next slide also um, yes for the custom buttons you use custom visualization correct the filter when you select 
Uh, this one, oh no, the, the, yeah, actually, yeah, this is uh, the custom visualization, which called like this, chocolate slicer. But basically, if you use a, a default slicer, let's say, it will also work. I just use this one to make, um, to make it nicer. Thank you. And can we connect this visualization custom to which, can you show the parameters please for the, these buttons, which field you put there? So uh, there I put the field uh, from our pivot table column. Oh, if, uh -huh. Yeah, so this column actually um, list. Values and it's grouped by, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, okay. So we'll let then move to the one more dynamic uh, item that I have prepared for you. This is dynamically uh, to be able to dynamically select a metric that customer is interested in. Let's go to the demo and it will be easy to show and demonstrate it. Um, Let's go back to the first slide here and to this chart actually. So in this chart we have, um, we are able to choose and analyze, and analyze by rate or by payment. Uh, so right now we see that rate is selected. It means that uh, for example, for this specific uh, program, we have some specific rate value. Uh, let's say user want to see um, the payment uh, so the amount of money that each program uh, has. So in that case, we just uh, click on the matrix that we're interested in, which is the payment, and our slide changed dynamically. Uh, so here we can have more options. We can have a list of different uh, metrics that a user can be interested to analyze. Um, but let's go to the implementation. So first of all, I created a table, very small table with called measure selection. And it has one column and only two values. So actually the values are those that the user can be able to specify. So if you have, let's say 10 measures that you want to specify, then in this uh, table, you specify all of them and then uh, that's all for that small table, then you use uh, this table in that slicer where user can choose which item he wants. So if you take a look on the slicer, we are, I'm using uh, this analyzed by column from our measure selection table. Uh, this table does not have any relationships to other tables. This is just like the, um, static table that has this list of attributes available and that's it. And then the main trick here is uh, in the measure, dynamic measure, which I created. Uh, let's take a look. So I'm using here the selected measure. Uh, and the main idea is that I'm using the switch uh, uh, function here. So this is basically the docs who is not very familiar with Power BI. And really a lot of functions that we can uh, use. Here I'm using the switch. A switch um, check the value which is selected in our analyzed by. In our analyzed by, we can select one specific metric. Let's say for now uh, it uh, payment is uh, specified. So switch uh, look, and, uh, look into that analyzed by and see if payment is selected, then please bring me the monthly payment um, from our DB. If rate is uh, selected, then please bring me the rate from our DB. And that's all. If you, let's say, have more metrics, then we just um, extend our switch close uh, and specify all other options that we can have and put right calculation. Uh, so the main trick here was in the dynamic measure. And we, when we built that measure, we use this measure in our value over here in, the, in this uh, chart. Um, 
Okay, and our last uh, item. Uh, here. My apologies. Uh, I have yes. a question about uh, dynamic measures for a yes. uh, Tell me, please, did you check or probably uh, you had created some POC uh, for a dynamic measures? Uh, what I mean? On the previous project, we have had a situation where, for example, on the report, we had a slicer mm -hmm. with around uh, 20 members, 20 dynamic calculations. And we face it that, uh, uh, for example, if in this slicer we have one member, two, three, four, five, it's absolutely okay. But uh, when we uh, add more members to the slicer, uh, Power BI started to generate absolutely incorrect uh, execution plan scripts and for each new uh, measure for dynamic uh, slicer, uh, we had a delay around plus two, three seconds. So, uh, for example, for our case, when we choose some elements, we are waiting feedback from Power BI around 13, 14 seconds. So, uh, do you know something about it? How we can fix it? Probably we have another ways how we can realize uh, dynamic uh, measures for a power bar. Uh, yeah, so as I, if I understand correctly, the main issue was with the performance, right? Absolutely correctly. Performance and absolutely wrong uh, and uh, around uh -huh. more than 10,000 rows. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, um, one case, so actually performance is very also big and interesting topic that has a lot of um, where we can look into different points. But if you have, uh, let's say, if I have some situation like that, I will try to uh, build it in a different way. For example, uh, if I have, uh, I can use, for example, bookmarks that I showed previously, or also, um, pivot table should work as well. So previous two dynamic options that I showed, uh, you can try that one. But <clears throat> to be honest, I am also not in 100% sure which one is the um, best option. I think that performance, it's always about to try it and see which one works the best. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, Okay, so let's move to the last item here, which is row level security. Uh, so imagine the case, the case that I had is that um, I had my main report and this is report that uh, this information in the report is available for all users and everyone can see it. And, but also there was uh, um, another report with some detailed information and some sensitive and secured information. So not everyone can see this information, but only a small uh, part of uh, users. Let's call this group executives. So this executive group uh, should be able to navigate from our main report to the detailed report and see some information uh, deeply, some sensitive information and so on. But the users who are included uh, in another group, they are, not in a they are not executives, they should not be able to navigate from the main report to the uh, detailed report. Uh, let me show you how it looks. So um, I implement, to implement this, I used row level security. I will show you how I did it. But for now, let's go to the data sets and choose the data set where I have my row level security and go to security options. So then here we have two groups which I created. One is executives, the one where which can go to other report and other which should not be able to go to another report. Uh, we can test this role. So to see how it looks, if we, uh, let's say executives, then we can go to the user.
only top 10 users by payment. But let's say that executive wants to see a payment for all users or any other uh, sensitive information. Here is just example. So if you are ex executives, you can click on this title over here and what it does, it navigates you in a separate window to the detailed report. And in this detailed report, you see more information like password for each user uh, and payment for each user and so on. Uh, if you are not executive but uh, any other uh, group, then when you click right here, nothing is happening so you can't navigate so how i implemented it uh, i have my table oops sorry i have my table with the row level security it has only two rows one main which will be for the executives and it has url for our detailed report and the other has nothing in the url value so uh, when we have no URL, it won't be able to navigate. And then what I did, I go to the modeling and then manage roles. Here we can manage our role level security. So I created two group, uh, two roles, which you saw on a Power BI service. One is executives, and I put a filter for that table where the name is main. And actually main has this URL. So we, so uh, for executive groups, uh, the URL uh, for detailed report is available. For other group, uh, we have other which do not have this URL. This is the step what I did. And then the last part was the action itself. So here I put the empty button, which has action and action can be web URL. So you can specify the URL that you want to navigate to. And here in the web URL icon, I have conditional formatting and what, I, what I'm doing, I am just specifying the value for that URL. Uh, here we always will have one possible option. If this is executive, then from the URL uh, column, we will take the needed URL to detail report. If we uh, are other group, then we will have empty value for the URL, so it won't let us to navigate. So I think that that's the main idea how I did it. Uh, but row level security can be done uh, for, like, I don't know, even not for navigating for other reports, but even for this report, where users can see different content. But I show you the examples that I had in my project. Um, I think that that's all. Uh, for the items. Uh, also, I uh, added a couple of useful links for the bo bookmarks that we discussed, for the row level security that might be useful for you, uh, some uh, method for connecting data that we discussed at the very beginning, uh, and also some Power BI documentation. Uh, and that's all. If you have any other questions, please ask. Uh, I have one question uh, regarding the option where we choose uh, parameters for uh, switching between two data sources. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to add uh, some button or filter to uh, switch between those uh, data sources on the report itself? Uh, actually, um so I was trying to find the option where we can uh, add our parameter to report. Uh, to be honest, I didn't find the way. So the only option as I did is to go as I showed you here and switch the parameter. Um, only this option and Power BI service, uh, we have, uh, I will show you, uh, let's go to the data source, data sets. Uh, we can go to the settings of our data set and here we have the parameters. If we have any parameter in our report, then we can, uh, then this parameter will be, parameter section will be available and you can specify the value which you need. But um, unfortunately, 
I do not have um, an answer for you how to add it to the report. Maybe there is some option because a lot of new features are added in Power BI, but for now I didn't um, I didn't face with that. So uh, I'm not sure, need to investigate it more. Okay, thank you.